I just want to start off with a, a little bit of a review of the title, the title of our time together. So the title, the overall title is The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why, why, why did God take this title upon himself, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? If you were going to choose three people from the Old Testament, maybe we would have called it the God of Moses, Elijah, and um, you know David. Or uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of very prominent and you know godly people in the Old Testament. And uh, actually, uh, some you know Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They they had their their weak points as well. They were not necessarily the perfect the perfect people in the Old Testament. Why why do we have these three together? And uh, the uh, and actually, why why isn't it why isn't it just one? Um, or why isn't it five? There, there's a, there's a reason. There's a reason for all these things. And I think the more we get into it week by week, we'll begin to appreciate more and more why there's not just one, not just Abraham, but there's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and how these three these three really go together. Actually. Uh, they really complement one another, and uh, they they're even just in the way that their stories are presented. They're all their stories overlap one another in the Bible in Genesis. It's not you know first Abraham cut, next Isaac cut, next Jacob, but actually their stories all overlap and they're all intertwined. They kind of uh, depend on one another and they're they they interact with one another. So these three really they really go together: Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And last week. We finished kind of the major portion there with Abraham as we, I mean, this, basically singing the song that was a review of last week. This, this week, we will start to go on with Isaac. All right, I'm just going to throw a couple of things out here. If you have any idea about the, the background of these three people, Abraham, Abraham was, he was an extraordinary person. All right, the, some of the things that he did had never been done before by godly men before him. All right? So a few of them are that he, uh, the, way, the way that God appeared to him and called him was, was very unique. On Genesis 12, uh, he, he asked Abraham to, to cross a river, and that's where we get the word Hebrew from, the book of Hebrews in the New Testament. He was told to leave his family behind, leave his kindred, leave his country, and go to a land where, uh, where the Lord would show him. He was, called some, he was called the friend of God. And for that time, that was, that, was very, that was further than anyone had gone before, to be called a friend of God. That's, that's a great title, right, Latrell? Just, you know, a friend, Latrell, a friend of God. I mean, that's, that's an awesome title. And also, uh, he... he he begot, or he had Isaac after, after the time when people should have children. It was kind of a miracle, and of course, and then he offered that very son that he had. He offered him as a sacrifice. Was going to offer him as a sacrifice. All these things are, are kind of a pioneer, extra, extraordinary things that Abraham did. He had his he had his moments of weakness too, but these are all extraordinary things. When we come to Isaac. There's, there's, a, there's a contrast. Abraham was more extraordinary. Isaac, as you can see from the title, was ordinary. Isaac was ordinary. And what we'll go on to see further after we cover Isaac is Jacob. Jacob was, he was, he was conniving. He, you, could, you could even use the word evil. Uh, but if you put these three together, you have the God is the God of extraordinary ordinary and sinful or evil people. All right? It doesn't matter where you are. Are you extraordinary? God wants to be your God. Are you ordinary? He still wants to be our God. Are you evil? It doesn't it doesn't matter. God God still wants to be our God. All right? So these three things, extraordinary, ordinary, and uh, sinful, evil, conniving, however you want to put it, these these they they go together and they they create what if it was just Abraham, I'm the God of Abraham. Then, 
most of us would be in trouble because uh, we may not be at that level. But it's a good thing that there's also Isaac and, more importantly, Jacob. I think many of us would raise our hands. Are you Jacob? You know, many of us would raise our hands. Um, okay, so these three. Then there, there's also, uh, you know, with, with Abraham, there was, uh, you could say there was a certain standard, there was a certain vision there. I mean, he, he, he saw something. With Isaac, what we'll see is, you, you could almost say with Abraham, it was kind of a standard was set. With Isaac, we have uh, some, we're going to get into it, the words that we use on the title. Two words, two I-N-G words. Let's read them together. All right, the title for this message is, An Ordinary Person Receiving and Enjoying. Receiving and Enjoying. You can characterize Isaac's life. We, we all want, no, I think all of us would love to, Live this kind of life, receiving and enjoying. Receiving and enjoying. Then, when we get to Jacob, what we'll see is God's smiting and disciplining. Smiting and disciplining. Now we might think, oh, I wish I could just be the experience, just have the experience of Isaac, just receiving and enjoying. Actually, we need, it, it's a, again, you know what a, you know, you know what a milk stool is? A milk stool? Most of us probably didn't grow up in, uh, on the farm, but uh, you know, a milk stool it just has three legs, all right. And you know why it has three legs? It's because uh, if you have if you have a, a stool with four legs, most likely those four, just because of imperfections, they're not they're not they're not. It's not going to be a balanced chair. It takes three points to make a plane, right? That's mathematics. And so actually, when you're in the barn, you're your, uh, your surface is uneven. You're not sitting on flat cement. Usually you're on hay or all kinds of stuff around. But if you have a, a milk stool with just three legs, you'll, you'll, you'll remain stable no matter where you put the stool. All right? So, again, uh, four is too many. Two, if you just have a table with a chair with two legs, obviously you can't, you can't sit on that either. But three, three provides stability and, you know, just... Anyway, that's just, that's just an illustration, but uh, we, you need all three. We need Abraham. We need the experience of Abraham. We need the experience of Isaac. We need the experience of Jacob. Otherwise, there's, there's something missing. There's something missing from our experience. All right? Now, uh, so what we want, first thing I want to cover is this word ordinary. Ordinary. And... There, there, in the song we didn't sing which is him too. Maybe you can just flip to the back of your page there. Look at him too. All right, so there's verse 1, which talks about the Lord's promise. And what's the Lord's promise? It's in the last line of that, of that verse, of that stanza. Him too, verse 1 at the end, it says, For Savior, thou art with me all the days. All right, wonderful promise. The Lord is with us all the days. All right. Then in verse 2, verse 2, 3, and 4, name different kinds of days that we might have, right? And verse 2 is what? Days of darkness and distress, all right? We're heading into midterm season. Perhaps this is, this is a time of darkness and distress for some people. Uh, then verse 3 talks about different kinds of days, days of joy and deep delight, right? Joy, joy and deep delight. Those who do well in the next couple of weeks, maybe they will, when they get their test back, some will have joy and deep delight. Others may not. Uh, okay, but, but there's, we, all, we, all, we all have these kinds of days, all right? Is there anyone who's never had days of darkness and distress? No, I think all of us. What about joy and deep delight? Hopefully, we, we've had some of those days. I think we all have. All right, but what, I, what I'd really like to focus on is verse 4. Verse 4 says what? All the other days that make my life, marked by no special joy or grief, or strife, days filled with quiet duties, trivial care, burdens too small for other hearts to share. These are ordinary days, all right, ordinary days. Nothing, you know, out of, nothing extraordinary, nothing terrible, nothing, you know, no joy and deep delight, but neither darkness and distress. And actually, if we, if we really think about it, it would be interesting to just, to really consider it mathematically, but... Probably the ordinary days make up the majority of our days. 